hello I'm Dana Chandler people know me from my YouTube channel as always Auntie Dana and real quick why is it always Auntie Dana because you want to hear story read out loud it's always Auntie Dana you want to hear welcome so I've been reading kids books for about three years now and recording them and how to read a kid's story properly now you're probably hoping and expecting I'm gonna roast some of my competitors other people that read kids books or make fun but you know well even though it might happen a little bit <laughs> what they did that when I was watching is reminded me of some of the first things that I did when I was starting this and it reminded me hey I got something here I can share so let's see I'm gonna start with always always prepare your materials read the book a couple of times get familiar with it um, make little notes I use post-it notes where you want to stop the story for a minute to ask a question or explain more about the character or the way the storylines going mm -hmm. and you want to put interest and enthusiasm right not overboard but to create an interest and a pattern in speaking and lower voices and sometimes a funny voice and you want to do that variety and that'll hold kids attention mm -hmm. another thing you want to do before we get into that nitty-gritty is you want to show the page close so what I do, some people just show the whole book, right? What I like to do, because I like to be engaged with my audience, I like to read the story here. They can see it as I'm reading it. And then I slowly give them that look. Yeah. Get it? All right. First things first. Always, always want to give credit to the author, the illustrator, sometimes even the publishing company so this one is a book by Steve Metzger and illustrated by Ella and Ella Oxstad and it's okay it's okay that I did that because you want to be human to human you want to have like I didn't see the name right away because it's covered up with a tag but that way if it's called like if that's a little bit of a stumble well, that's what people do, right? So to keep my story reading also as human as possible, but not AI, right? That people do those things. So keep it more natural. All right. You can do a very brief intro on the book. You don't want to go on and on in an introduction because you'll lose kids' interest. So what you could do is talk about, show them the cover, Princess Kitty. Oh, look at her. Does she look like a happy cat? Let's find out what's going on with Princess Kitty. And then you start your story. And let's see. If you have watched my stories before, you know I like to use props. I like to dress up. And I also like to do a craft that goes with the book. Now, the last story I read, we made a monarch butterfly. And what you want to do is... Also, just before the story in your introduction is very briefly show the art you're making and tell about the supplies. So after our story, wait and watch the craft and maybe you can make it with me sometime. That would be a clothespin and some jewel stickers, wiggly eyes and pipe cleaners. Oh yes, and a little bit of glue for the eyes. So the rest is just tucked into the opening, the opening of that, right? So give an explanation. You know, maybe they'll stop the video and come back and do the art with you after. All right. Talk and read directly to your viewers, right? Ask questions in the story. Oh, I'll show up. And then stop to point out um, behaviors, lessons, feelings, situations, right? That way we're making the story relatable to real life. That's something that's really important to me. So let's just, I'll give you an example of like stopping to ask questions or explaining the story. It says, they're trying to keep it a secret. 
but a smart princess always knows what's happening in her kingdom. My surprise party is a week away. I can't wait. Luckily, my daily palace activities keep me very busy. And you could say, oh, looks like they're getting for ready for a party. How exciting. And you can say, I wonder what kind of activities. Do you think the book will tell us what they are? And go on from there. And I can't stress enough about your voice. Um, you want to be loud enough, clear enough, and you want to flow with a good variety and face the camera, looking up. And, you know, sometimes some silly voices, be a little sing songsy if you know a little poem or a little song to go with maybe part of your story. Um, pure silly fun, right? We're showing the joy of reading. Okay. Excuse me. I didn't realize we're a painting now. A princess likes to be included in all activities. Well, I'll just open one of my presents. And then you could say, do you remember when you've had a birthday or a surprise party and you see all the presents, you just can't wait. It's hard to get into eating or playing a game because you just want to spy those presents, right? Bring a real life situation into your story. Okay, um, some positive hints um, is maybe you could get your child when you show them the story, say, do you have a stuffed favorite kitty? or a kitty or something like that that you want to hold while we're doing the story. And maybe you can even encourage them to make the stuffy, do the actions as you're reading. Some kids like that, yeah. Um, and so your actions is, it really is okay to put the book down every so often to ask those questions, garner the interest, personalize the viewer's time with you. Okay, keep in mind, um, minor human nuances, a little cough or a sneeze. I don't edit those out. I mean, as long as they don't make a big mess, right? Um, again, it's human and we want this to be what I do. I pride myself on being as real as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. I even, um, if I'm doing art, right? If I'm doing the art, if I accidentally drop it, oh, just a sec, and I get it because that's what people do. If I bend something, say if it broke off or something, oh, because that's what people do. And then I'll just say, oh, let's just give it a fix this time. This one might look a little different, but that's okay, because it's ours. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay, so you wanna do a practice run on your art as well before you start it. Now, if you do choose to do an art, it is imperative that the viewers can see what you're doing. Um, I literally did see a creator um, attempt to do an art that was completely off camera. Um, I have like an art easel that I use when I do an art and I, I prop it up here. And maybe sometimes my hand is covering, but you can always see what I'm doing. I mean, there's things I'm still learning to write, so at least they can see what I'm doing. And if I'm not using the art easel, at least I'll hold it up and in the example of these, these are twisting pipe cleaners. So I'll do it right in front of the camera, show them what I'm doing. I do have a little table here, <laughs> but if I'm saying, okay, and now I'm doing this and bending that, right? There's no appeal to that. Okay, I would talk about each step as I go along as I'm doing it, give little hints. Um, example, we were making a Father's Day card and um, I, Said you want to fold the paper so the opening is at the bottom. Opening is at the bottom, right? Now here's a really obvious one. Don't hold the book in front of your face when you're speaking. It's going to sound muffled. It's going to sound like you don't really, you aren't conscious that there's actual kids watching you. Um, yeah, right? Oh, and another thing, when I look back on one of my early videos, and I know some people still do this, but please do not lick the page. <laughs> the 
right? Uh, now my DNA is there and I have to fix that. However, um, what I do when the page is hard to turn, I have, you know, like a wet wipe or a wet face cloth, I off camera, okay? And then I can dip my finger off camera and give that page its turn. I just find it really distracting, okay? And let's see. Oh, yeah. Now this is, this one's debatable. Sometimes I do it, sometimes not, but, oh, it's time for a party game. This one's my favorite. So it's following with your finger and um, it's debatable. Like I say, sometimes I do, it, it just depends. And one thing that I forgot to mention as well is, you see how I'm up close, I'm right here, I'm engaged and the book is there. I actually did see a creator sit way back like this and one of the creators didn't even show the book and the other creator just went real quick. So <laughs> there really are some good tips and tricks to help you read your stories better too. I'm happy that I could share them and I'll see you next story. Bye-bye.